बैंकर्स सेलिंग बैड फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स टू ओल्ड पीपल तुम जितना भी फाइनेंशियल इन्फ्लुएंसर करो दिस यूलिप्स एंड ऑल दैट द स्टफ दैट इज टॉक्सिक एंड सोल्ड टू ओल्ड पीपल दैट शुड रिक्वायर अ जेल टर्म द रियल थिंग दैट चेंज फॉर इंडिया एंड नॉट जस्ट ट्रेडिंग प्री मच एवरी थिंग वॉज वन कंपनी इट्स रिलायंस जियो इंडिया हैज द चीपेस्ट स्टॉक ट्रेडिंग इन द वर्ल्ड एंड द चीपेस्ट पेमेंट सिस्टम इन द वर्ल्ड पब्लिक मार्केट पीपल कीप थिंकिंग की पब्लिक मार्केट में लिस्ट होगा तो हम अपने शेयर बेच सकते हैं इट्स मच आई एम मच बेटर पर हैप्स मीटिंग कस्टमर्स देन आई एम मीटिंग इन्वेस्टर्स बिकॉज आई एम वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉर्ड हाई दिस इज सिद्धार्थ अलवालिया एंड वेलकम टू द नियन शो कैन यू इमेजिन फायरिंग योर सेल्फ फ्रॉम योर ओन कंपनी दैट्स एग्जैक्टली वॉट आर गेस्ट डिड ओवर अ डिकेड अगो क्वेश्चनिंग हिज डिसीजन मेकिंग स्किल्स एंड वैल्यू ही एडेड टू द कंपनी ही डिसाइडेड टू टेक अ स्टेप बैक today he is a finance portfolio manager that manages over 500 crores in in the indian markets making his second appearance on the neon show a warm welcome to the capital mind founder deepak shanoy i would also like to thank our sponsors prime venture partners for sponsoring the neon show hope you enjoy it uh, deepak welcome back to the neon show we did the first episode with you online during the covid times and this is the second one Firstly thanks for inviting me sir that it's been great it's uh, i think the last episode was was uh, fun and interesting and the and i was in uh, a different phase yes. in my own life in markets and all that stuff it's been 20 years for you of managing people's money right not 20 years we are managing money uh, external money since 2017 and before that before i was not managing other people i was managing my own money so okay and how did you make your own money to how Well, a combination of a lot of things. I guess I ran my first company. I started my first company in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. So we were uh, uh, bootstrap, um, or what they call revenue positive. Yeah. Which was pretty much table stakes at the time. But yeah, the, we <laughs> now it has to be called out. Now you have to call out. Yes, I am making revenue uh, because that time the only question was whether you'd make profit now or two years yeah. down the line. But we were revenue positive through for a long time. So. um by the time i left that i joined another company and then we sold that company um so bunch of liquidity events sure. and nowadays it doesn't take much if you're knowledgeable about something somebody's willing to pay for that for that knowledge even if you don't have a job so entrepreneurship is actually it's no longer as much about risk because people say that you you are taking a lot of risk if you start up yeah my experience it's not because yes you will lose some income during the startup but if the startup fails then you get a better job than if you were, if you were in on one of those yeah. ibm type companies for that much time right so you, your profile is in a much better place and you you are able to so i don't think it's as risky as it used to be earlier if you fail as a entrepreneur nobody will give you a job now um, if you fail as an entrepreneur you are more likely to get a better job than yeah. otherwise so in that context capital came over time i started capital mine in 2014 14 was the officially when the company came about so it's going to be 9 9 years this month in fact this week at that i mean relatively small amounts of money but uh, managing uh, that now we're we're about to about 1300 crores from 2017 when we started uh, you're only allowed to manage external money if you're SEBI registered so we got our registration in 2017 so it took 3 years to get the license Yeah, we uh, we didn't intend to start off managing money. It was not an intention. We were trying to build a tech company in the finance space. Uh, so the fintech, the Purana Zamana of fintech, yeah. in the sense of uh, um, we weren't uh, we weren't venture funded. So we had to be very lean. Yeah. But we wanted to build. And you have always chose to not to be take take any external funding, right? I Is don't there... know if it's chose. That's a little arrogant of me to say so, but. because we did try and meet we said to we had met vcs during the first stint as well as second time every time i have met vcs in 1999 i met vcs in 2007 i met vcs in 2014 and 15 um they weren't interested or maybe we were not the right fit and all that stuff so it was it's okay it's not like you know it's which turned out okay um and a lot of people tell me now that uh, maybe it's not as bad to have not taken not taken right so because they like we struggle with the expectations and the the growth challenges and and all that because you 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 put a certain picture in there right? yeah. so i have set an internal target when we started off he said 
we should be 100 crores in the first year and 1,000 crores in five years. So now we're about five and a half and 1,300. So more or less those internal goals have been met. But those are internal, right? But if I'd made those things to an external party and said we'll do this, yeah. then the challenge would be altogether different because they'd be like mapping your thing almost like everyone that's saying, I you I going, going there or not. And it's 1,000 crores too conservative. Why should you be 10,000 crores? Yeah. Then why are you not thinking big? Why are you not thinking big? And we didn't spend. We 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 wanted to be profitable. So we've been profitable every year since 2017. To that extent, uh, uh, expectation meeting has been complicated. But it's not also that you know I it wasn't for lack of trying. So we went and met a bunch of people. They told me you know a lot of things, uh, good things. I'm not that they're bad people, but it's just that uh, we weren't exciting. Yeah. But I've noticed this, okay, it's it's a phase and you sometimes it's the personality. So I can sell to customers. I can raise thousands, zero crores of customers giving me their money to manage. Over an organic period of time, or, you have delivered results. But if I try to go and raise, so maybe now it will change because now we have some achievements to acquire it. So now I can go and say, listen, I need some money. And we, sure. do, we may need some money to raise some money. Uh, we will need to raise some money soon because we are applying to be a mutual fund. Yeah. And uh, the requirements have just gone up from 50 crores to 150. So we would have met the 50 crore uh, limit, but we won't meet the 150. So we'll have to raise external capital. But that raising, I don't know how difficult it's going to be. Like uh, I always keep my partner. It's very, it's much, I'm much better perhaps meeting customers than I am meeting investors uh, because I'm very straightforward. Maybe customers find that pleasing but investors do. yeah I'll give you 15 16 to 20 percent IRR yeah I mean so I can't promise that right so I want to, why would I do this business if I'm not doing 15 16 percent IRR I mean, I put it in the markets and make will make more than that but my net worth is all in capital mind yeah and if I don't get 50 percent I don't want to promise this to anybody else but we have grown at 100 percent almost every year except for last year when we grew 50 percent but my deal is if you're not growing like that, why am I doing this business? Yeah. I have to grow. And I, I know that when I get to mature stages, I won't grow at that speed. I'm nowhere near the job. So the, we can grow. The speed at which we grow will not be 1,000% or 10,000. I won't grow 10x in a year. I don't perhaps want to also because in this field, growing too fast has, has repercussions. You are in a regulated industry. You, if you grow too fast, there are uh, doubts on whether you'll be able to make uh, all the regulatory uh, concessions, whether you'll make some regulatory concessions, which will then hurt you in the future. But beyond that, to a certain extent, it is just the cycle of the market. And you would have given your customers like 20% error, I believe, on a six-year wholesome basis. 20, well, depends on which strategy, of course. Right now, I have personally invested in the PMS myself. Uh, so my own IRR is 19.5%. 85% as of... Uh, net of class. everything. This is net of fees, uh, not net of taxes. Okay. So, net of fees and net of... Deepak, I wanted to ask another question regarding Indian investing habits, right? India as a nation is just picking up right now on stocks, right? And uh, last two, three years have been uh, good for India. We had uh, the founder of one of the large online brokerages on, and said it completely changed after UPI. Pre-UPI, it was very different. Post-UPI... The investing has moved in such a way online that large companies like Zerodha couldn't have been created without. Without UPI? Yeah, without UPI. Nah, I don't think that's true. Uh, I don't think that's true because With of... UPI multiple. without online KYC, KYC also. Without online KYC, I admit. Because, because there were 30 pages that were required. I think. Yes. And I agree with that part. But that online KYC would have come anyways. It's not like uh, zero, you know. But I think a lot of factors help. So I'll give you the first example. Uh, uh, India's first set of companies was, there was a company called Fepesa. They were the first online brokerage. Okay. Because otherwise all brokerages were offline. Sher Khan used to be there. Sher Khan was the second, I think, or second or third. Uh, there was another company called Geojit Security, still listed and uh, available. It's, it was also one of those things. It was, um, uh, Sher Khan was a, was a traditional broker called SSKI. Kanti Lal, Ishwar Lal. Uh, they uh, created an offshoot called Sher Khan and then a bunch of investors got in and all that. Uh, few other companies also came up. This was in 1999. They were offering uh, much lower cost per trade, 1%. Can you imagine 1% was low? Today, people pay flat 20 rupees per trade. Yeah. 
that time it was you know so then uh, zero was started in 2009 by that time there were a bunch of others so and you were actively investing slash trading back then uh, from 2003 onwards i think i've been more or less active 2003 se pehle i didn't know what stocks were really so uh, i mean little bit here and there but nothing more the smart thing that was happening over the next uh, few years in 2006 if you believe it as a percentage of gdp more stocks were traded in 2007 than they are now so we think stocks are popular but they're not that time the amount of popularity of the stock market was much bigger as a percentage of gdp uh, to give you an example at that time you used to trade maybe 30 35000 crores per day today we we trade about 80000 crores a day 2007 to now is about 4 60 years yeah in 16 years the economy has more than tripled yet stock trading is just about little bit more than double so in effect uh, the stock market should be less popular but just that we feel that way upi already a lot of the technological changes came nse itself was a completely online brokerage there was no floor uh, uh, online trading uh, exchange Uh, brokers that embrace that eventually figured out that you don't need to be in bombay that's when ifl share yeah. khan and all became popular when it got around to rest of india you still needed a terminal the real thing that changed for india and not just trading pretty much everything was one company and while i own it it's reliance jio they brought cheap and very very quick big bandwidth to india at a relatively Yeah. uh easy availability and easy low price this changed the game because earlier you couldn't stream data because bande ke paas speed hi nahi hai kahan se stream karoge ab speed hai and then the cost of trading was falling every year because what was happening was with electronic stuff you needed much lesser everything yeah. infrastructure ye wo and all that stuff so people like zeroda and not just, it was not just zeroda but a bunch of others as well and i know zeroda Zero i know nitin from before he started zeroda and i know how uh you know uh, i i remember his passion about starting something with this fixed amount per order not per trade not per share uh concept this was something that he had thought about in 2006 itself and okay. said ki boss ye ye yoga i met uh, you know and that time he was working for another brokerage called uh, reliance security he had his own sub brokerage of reliance uh, securities and reliance was charging per lot of options now he said per lot doesn't make sense people have to make a lot of money before they get profitable so he was like if we charge it per per order then they can get profitable at a let lesser you know yeah. fee so to his credit that thing changed the industry and the industry in the options industry today is at least 500 times what it was in 2006 undoubtedly but uh, um the share trading thing over time because of lack of reduce of reduction of leverage and a lot of other aspects people don't trade stocks as much as they they used to i think uh, one what about investing in stocks or uh, people same uh, so people invest more in mutual funds now than they used to earlier but you see even mutual funds the sips add up to about 16000 crores a month that's 200 billion dollars investors take out 100 billion dollars So that's about eight thousand. So net investment is eight thousand crores. This is nothing. Yeah. To give you an example of how crazy it was in nineteen ninety seven in the U S, um, they were talking of U S investors investing five hundred dollars of billion dollars a month into uh, uh, stocks. This is twenty five years back. We have not yet reached those yeah. volumes in mutual funds. So I think. you know that is that is one 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 interesting uh, you know caveat maybe of course people investing in stocks and people investing in mutual funds are are separate so you should consider the capital separately but i was just telling you and i'm talking about the 500 billion dollars in us mutual funds and etfs we're still nascent in that yeah. in that context but i think a lot of the small small things in covid they said complete online kyc uh, digital onboarding fantastic help the brokerages who are online hit the brokerages that are offline got destroyed before that uh, upi came in and said payment instant payment it wasn't that it wasn't there yeah. in 2011 and i had a bro zero the account from one of the early days uh, we were getting uh, we were able to do neft transfers okay. and neft transfers 
to zero da would get reflected very fast so earlier it used to be take one day and then now it was yeah. now it's almost instantaneous as soon as you do a transfer if you're in hdfc you'll get yeah. but what changed about that neft is completely free neft is available 24/7 yeah this was not true earlier this was changed by rbi very recently in fact the fact that neft is free is a is an rbi making otherwise banks were charging 5 yes. rupees 10 rupees per neft now they don't charge they're not allowed to NFT is free, RTGS is free, both are 24/7. Of course, UPI is yeah. uh, free so far, and that's also uh, this thing. So yes, these I think innovations help, but it was not just that. There was a bunch of things, and I think incredibly leapfrogging things compared to the US, which is why India has the cheapest stock trading in the world, and the cheapest payments systems in the world. Period. And uh, the bigger responsible player for these, I think, is. the telecom industry relanjo in particular who came and slashed rates i mean i even i go back now i have an hours to an hours drive i don't worry that i will not be i i just have to connect my laptop to my yes. phone and i will work as if i could watch a netflix movie and i know that it will not uh, glitch or will, if you lived in 2012 this would be like a dream ya cha no streaming beyond wifi no streaming i mean the in, two, in 1999 there was no, 2001 there were uh, there was this company called uh, the, it's what is vodafone now was called hutch and uh, when there's a cricket 6 or 4 they would send you 10 frames grainy image frames of this person hitting a 6 so it was t- just 10 frames so you had to play them one after the other and it would play as an mms it was that bad you couldn't imagine working yeah. uh, out of this 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 setup now it's seamless so trading working people are doing this at, i mean if you're a security guard at an airport you're doing trading so you know so you think the, the major factor was geo and then a lot of small factors combined a lot of small small the, the, the small small factor i can you can enumerate them so trading itself i don't know if you're familiar with the brokerage industry but the brokerage industry itself has gone through a lot of changes there's something called a t plus 2 settlement you know in 90 before 1994 it was a t plus 14 settlement that means if you bought something today you would get the shares in your hand 14 days later yeah. in t plus 2 it is if you paid today you would get your money uh, two days later because you could place a trade today pay tomorrow and get the shares day after tomorrow that was yeah. the idea um then there is a then there now it has become a t plus 1 and a t plus 0 a t plus 0 means the same day i pay yeah and currently you get the shares in the next day but there's no reason why you can't get it on the same yeah. day is so this this has changed margins earlier margins had to be posted much later so the system was at risk at some point so now margins have to be posted much earlier mm-hmm. helps the online brokerages because in the online brokerage if you don't have the money in your account you can't yeah. even trade so they can post the margins instantly and the exchange is now more than happy ki acha margins hai to matlab kar lo trade i don't have to trust you this earlier fund of oh i trust him he is kantilal ishwar lal he will be fine wo sab nahi hai <laughs> so when you have a system like this uh, it is much more reliable lot of other advancements in the technology itself one interesting thing was a fight between nsc and a company called ft ft is a uh, financial technologies they okay. built the core software for uh, brokers yeah it was called odin or something like that yeah odin i think and if you had an odin license then a broker would typically take an odin back end license yes. and a front end license and give now um, what happened was nsc had a fight because ft wanted to create its own stock exchange okay called mcx sx uh, so nsc said yaar all our brokers are using this ft thing we need to have some kind of alternative so what do you do so you go and finance a company called omnisys and say ki aap ft ke competitor ho Haan. hum aapko paise denge aap apna software make please make Haan. it more popular Zero Dawn was born right when this mess was happening. NSC decided to take Omnisys and make it free for all brokers. Okay. So for the first four years, Zero Dawn did not need to build front-end software at all because they got it free from the exchange. Yeah. Not four years, maybe three years. Then in the end, NSC is like, "Yeah, of course, free. We will get. We will get 500, 500 rupees per month. Do up hmm. uh, this thing." So then they moved to an Omnisys module called Nest. Then they built something called Kite. By this time, uh, yeah. they, they, I think, K had joined them. and uh, they built it out so this was a series of providence what also happened in this process sebi was like acha online trading karna hai kar lo uh, password karna hai kar lo 
फिंगरप्रिंट करना है कर लो सो यू डोंट हैव टू रिमेंबर यूज नेम्स पासवर्ड यू कुड डू ऑनलाइन यू कुड डू दिस यू कुड डू दैट ऑल दीज रूल रिलैक्सेशंस एंड चेंजेस हैपेंड ओवर द प्रोसेस सो इट्स टाइनी 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 थिंग्स इट दे केप्ट ऑन इंक्रीजिंग टुडे बाय द वे वेयर इज ऑल द वॉल्यूम इट्स ऑल इन ऑप्शंस अर्लियर ऑप्शन इज टू ट्रेड वंस दे इज टू हैव एन एक्सपायरी वंस अ मंथ लास्ट थर्सडे ऑफ एवरी मंथ Today there is an expiry every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You can play options like you play in a gambling casino, and it's traded like a casino, unfortunately. But because the rules allow yeah. these new products to come, and everybody wants to play them, even the exchanges love it. So they keep you know creating more such products, and they want more such products to trade in the Indian market. So there are uh, people who just uh, today, for instance, today is uh, Tuesday. Tuesday is I think uh, something called a Fin Nifty, okay. a financial wall uh, Nifty, uh, expiry date. It doesn't matter. It could be potatoes. People will trade it if you have, if it has options and if the options are against potatoes or peanuts or onions, yeah. people will do it. That also helped because you had the proliferation of new kinds of products which anybody could access for as little as thousand, two thousand rupees as well. You don't need a license to trade in the in America if you want to trade options like the way you trade in India. You can buy options, but you can't sell options unless you either pass a test or have twenty-five thousand dollars. That those set of rules don't apply in India. In the last two years, right since we recorded the first one, what has changed in India? Twenty twenty-one to twenty twenty-three. Since then, a lot of things have changed in India itself. Of course, you've seen a uh, Ukraine war, India benefiting relative to other countries. Uh, relatively speaking, our inflation, our macro, our government finances, a lot of the macroeconomic stuff has changed in our favor. I think also you've had a, a rec- day of reckoning, perhaps, of the whole, uh, say, the startup industry in terms yeah. of funding up- availability. Another and all large stuff. exit, right? There was a one Flipkart, and now Caratlin. Now Car- Caratlin was fantastic. In fact, I think I was I was reading about it today, and I was uh, very impressed with. The, I mean, he stuck to his guns. He um, when he sold it, I think it was a fraction of what he eventually. Uh, so, so got. I'll tell you an interesting story, right? Before we die, so we interviewed Mithun three four months back. We went to Chennai, interviewed him on the podcast. Right? He told us that uh, when Carrot Lane, you know, was acquired. He was thinking of maybe quitting Carrot Lane at that point in time. You can imagine, right? The twenty per seven percent that he sold for forty five hundred yes. crores, right, wouldn't have happened. And then he went to uh, Rakesh Junjunwala. Rakesh Junjunwala is his mama and uncle. Oh, really? A far, a far away okay. uncle. And Rakesh told him, "See, if you can compound it forty to fifty percent year on year, that's like you have been doing. Believe me, seven to ten years, you would be a different person." So just stick to it. And Rakesh is a big, big fan of Titan as well. So I think, uh, but also I think one of the uh, things that Pithun did was uh, he made Carrot Lane such an interesting part of Titan that people were valuing Carrot Lane independently from Titan, at least in the public markets, saying that "yar, ye hai brand." So that uh, doing that. From the point of view of saying you, because now you don't have any other exit. Their yeah. only exit is that Tata buys you out, yeah. or Titan Titan buys you out. The uh, and you know traditional Indian businesses they don't tend to uh, give you a great valuation. I think Tata has created a different playbook. So Tata yeah. has acquired four to five companies, majority, one MG, big Correct. basket, Correct. few others, and they have this model. They own sixty to seventy percent of each company, and they want founder to run it for some point in time. Cure fit. Uh, right, right. Though Mukesh is now in news for coming out of CureFit, but it's a well-oiled machine. So the the aim is to take each of those units public. I I don't know whether this unit will go independently public. Uh, no, no. Now it won't because now it will get absorbed yeah. inside of uh, Titan, which makes sense. But I think uh, so. Even uh, this, so, this has been a weirdish kind of thing. See so what happens. Let's say you're a startup and you get a twenty percent investment from a company. Now twenty percent is okay because twenty percent may. Uh, You you don't have to uh, say that the person may not have too much of a yeah. say. If you have fifty percent investment from a company, then that company becomes your exit, unless that company is an investment company. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Zomato had a uh, Nokri as an investor. Nokri was uh, to the extent that when Nokri's conference calls were on, people were looking at Zomato and saying, "Hame apka bhi conference call chahiye." So my daughter was like, "We're not public." He's like, "We don't care. If Nokri owns more than fifty percent in you, you are yeah. effectively a subsidiary, and therefore we should we should know." So there was a bunch of uh, phone calls and conference calls that was created at that time. Eventually, Nokri's 
holding fell because Nokri is an investment company. It's not really an operating company. In Carrot Lane Triton's case, there was no other suitor available yeah. for. So it had to be absorbed by Triton. The smart thing that uh, they had done, and I, I don't know whether it was Mithun or the bankers, but they had carved out clauses on valuation. Ki when you do buy us out, this is the valuation at which, this is the way you have to calculate the valuation. They did come in with a really lousy valuation earlier. And I, apparently Mithun, I mean, I don't know this. I read it on yeah. a news article that Mithun said this is too less. And then they went back, they did a bunch of calculations. And I think 70, 17,000 closes is a good valuation, but it is less than what Titan is getting on uh, sales right now. Yeah. So they are, uh, Titan's getting about 10 times sales. And this is, uh, but this is current lane's sales are at 2,500 crores, 2,700. Exactly. So if, it, if you had given it a 10 times sales, you should have valued the company at 25,000 crores. Yeah. 25,000 crores made 27% is about 8,000 crores, 7,000 7, 7, something, well, 7,000 crores. So he got 4,500. Yeah. So obviously they valued it at lesser yeah. than they, they were valued in the market. But he, yeah, people yeah. are paid for Tata brand, Evo and all that. So uh, you've got, but you've got a better valuation. And I think had he uh, waited more, the earnings would have actually gone to 3,000, 3,500. But you know, I think then it would be difficult for Tata to have explained. But I'm, I'm honestly thankful. I mean, same Tata and Reliance earlier were known to be brands that didn't pay. Now both of them are paying. Reliance, they, I'm, I have still doubt about whether they pay or not. No, Reliance. I mean, I know people who've got money from it. Okay. So, for instance, uh, there've been at least I think ten or fifteen companies that have been acquired on the geo end. Okay. Uh, Reliance Retail has invested in a bunch of companies where they own 40-50%. 50% of Manish Malhotra, 50% of a bunch of uh, fashion brands. Uh, they always end up paying. Now, what, they, uh, what they've done is also done a lot of distress buys, like yeah. Urban Ladder yeah. and all that. Their, milk basket. You know, milk basket. The issue over there has been, um, uh, you know, they make an offer and then they, you know, uh, uh, give you the opportunity. When you're in distress, you don't have too much of a yes. position to stand on. Now, unfortunately, in India, what happens is there's a little bit of ego ka sawal also. So everybody's like, yeah, if I sell at this valuation, what will happen to the startup yeah. ecosystem and all that. So people keep telling me this about, say, Baiju's. Yeah, bad news aa gaya, fir Indian ecosystem ka kya hoa? Uh, but I think that doesn't matter. By using an independent company, yeah. if, some, if they have done something bad, then they have done something yeah. bad. Why should we blame the Indian startup yeah. ecosystem for this? So, uh, but that is that that ego problem thing has a issue because what happens is then VCs also will prefer to merge their companies rather than sell at a distress valuation. Yes. So they'll say, "Yeah, is valuation is good. You bring it here." I will convince my LPs, we'll give them stock in this fund and all that, yeah. and we'll do a cross uh, buyout. This has happened two or three times. In some cases, it failed uh, uh, when when even similar VCs have tried to bring down, bring a company into the same fold when they're doing the same business. That also I find surprising because a VC investing in two companies who are competing in the same business yeah. is a conflict, conflict at some level, tough. but... Uh, uh, you know, it happens. So it happens very often in public markets, but in public markets, it's not that if you invest in me, so if I'm a public company, I have no reason to tell you everything that I know, yeah. give you a board seat, uh, ask you for permission, what can I do? Unless you own the majority of that company. And in which case, it's not my company, it's your company. Yeah. It's like, you know, the, it's very clear that control is control, management is management. Yeah. But uh, if you own 20%, I may give you a board seat, I may choose not to. I, yeah. Because of the relatively public nature of markets, yes. I have to give you more information and all that. It's actually surprising to me why more startups don't go public at an earlier stage. But that's also because of the valuations. Nobody in the public market will pay those valuations early. Take for example, Traxon we talked about, right? Uh, 60, 65 crores of revenue, 800 crores they listed at. And they have oscillated between 600 to 900 crores of valuation. Which is decent, right? And as the company grows, the markets will value them more. I I would say using a revenue metric alone is not very useful. Sure. At some point, the company has to be profitable. Yeah. So if out of 65 crores, the guy earns a profit after tax of say 5 or 6 crores. Yeah. Then 800 crores is a little rich. Yeah. Unless you have a way to compound that 65 crores of revenue into say 400 crores of revenue. And because of economies of scale, you're able to increase your margins net after tax. Sure. 
to say 25%, which means you get 125 crores in profits. I'm willing to pay, say, 30 times for that. So that's 3,700 crores. So I don't mean pay, paying a 800 crore valuation today if I can get a 3,700 sure. crore valuation, say, four or five years. Yeah. So if there is that as a hope, then I can do this. But if there is no way to demonstrably increase that 65 crore revenue to 500, and that could be because, see, Straxon, for instance, serves the startup ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, and it serves VCs, it serves Ps. They, that market has an inherent limitation in size in India, per se. Yeah. Uh, perhaps in the US also, I mean, unless they're doing worldwide these things. But there's also the fact that um, this is an inherently cyclical business. You reach an upcycle in VC investments, you get a certain amount of business. When the down cycle starts, your customers will start telling you ki hame license nahi chahiye. I heard this recently, a company that uh, I know was selling SaaS software to a bunch of edtech companies. Yes. Uh, because Baiju's had acquired a bunch of edtech companies, Baiju's effectively had eight licenses. Okay. But for two years, they didn't care. They were like, ha, theek hai. Now, when there's a funding crunch, somebody's gone and done the numbers and said, why do we need eight licenses? We need one license for, for a company. Yeah. You pay per seat anyway. So, why do you need to pay eight license renewal yeah. fees? So, this company saw a 80% loss in revenue yeah. from Baiju's simply because they figured out that yeah. they don't need eight licenses, right? So it's a very interesting uh, uh, change of uh, scene. So this kind of stuff does weird things to revenue. So for attraction also, where there was a VC fund that would automatically aram say buy maybe three, four licenses. Yeah. Now they'll be like, eight licenses karte hmm. and you know, banate. And it's not cheap. So yeah. We pay for Bloomberg in the office, for instance. We have, like, we need one license. You would pay 10, 15 lakh rupees. Uh, yeah. It's 2 lakhs per month or 3 lakhs per month yeah. or something like that. Some, that's, the, uh, that's the going rate. But I do know people who used to have one Bloomberg terminal for every uh, fund manager and analyst yeah. and all that stuff. Now, because when there's a downturn, they will automatically be culling of this. So the same company which had five licenses will come down to three. This is a problem for Bloomberg, but they know that it's a cyclical business. Sure. So over, Bloomberg is anyway a private business, so it's not a... Yeah. Um, so it's a very interesting... So a company like Traxon will be valued according to these parameters. Sure. The problem is the private world doesn't take it that way. Yeah, The private world tends to value a lot of different things compared to the public world. Like I was in a... You know, we were in Goa together and I was on the panel and I was talking about, you know, when, when one company acquires another company. Um... In the private markets, it's usually a structured, yeah. they, you know, thing. There people talk about synergy and deal. Public market, no, first, hota hai ki, yaar, ye fraud to nahi ho hai. Hmm. So, because a lot of frauds happen in acquisitions and mergers. So, first thing is to identify whether it's a fraud. Yeah. But then, second one is to identify ki who is selling to whom. Yeah. Now, in the public market, it's very easy to say Zomato will invest in, uh, sorry, in the private market, Zomato will invest in Blinkit. Yeah. Public market, mein, yaar, that fellow's wife is working as this thing. This is a <laughs> conflict of interest. He was so, an angel love, investor in Blinkit. And all an, so, this conflict is resolved. Yeah. And as a public investor, I have every right to ask yeah. these questions. And we ask. We, uh, we, we will go crazy about asking some of these questions. And You ask are, directly to the management? So, yeah, of course. Ki, kyon, why, how is this? So, for instance, there was one company in which the promoter was merging all his private companies into the public company. Okay. The first sign is that huh. this thing. Then we saw the valuation wasn't very high. So it was okay. Why is he doing this? Hmm. So uh, two things came out. First, that this company had this promoter had created a bunch of companies. One of them was public, uh, or two, two of them were public, but the rest of them are all private. Yeah, they all worked in the same kind of a sector. Now, this impression is that that you are doing this business mein divert yeah. kar rahe ho, jo bhi hai. you could do that but this guy wasn't doing it because they were really small companies so in comparison so the question then was can all these questions be companies be eliminated he said I can't eliminate them but jo jo dhanda hai, I'll bring it to the main company and I'll merge all of them we'll get a small we'll Upside. get a nice valuation small valuation but it won't be a meaningful mm -hmm. valuation so by getting a 1% extra of the company yeah, yeah. by doing something like this is fair so you analyze things on those perspectives. Ki achha, achha, isse promoter is saying ki I don't have any more distractions. I don't need any of those things. Now I'm bringing it together. This is rare, but 
less rare is ki he is buying a company just there was a company i won't name it uh, but they got a, they were bought out by schneider for, not bought out as in they, there was a division of this which was bought out for by schneider for 500 crores company's market cap is 300 crores bahut acha share hai market hmm. cap 300 hai cash 500 hai 500 pe tax bhi de doge to 350 bacha hua 350 is more than the yeah. market cap aur business bhi bacha hua hai this company decided that it will merge with its founder ka promoter ka ek company that promoter ka company earns nothing but they merged it they wanted to merge it 50 50 valuation matlab half half giving the same valuation to is so people went and said what is wrong with you guys how can you value that company 300 crores when it doesn't have any business so then eventually some people had to threaten ki hum log sare bech denge share ye wo and all that for that company to reverse it because that is what happens in the so in a private market transaction you may not look at the things in the same angle you yeah. don't look at conflict of interest in the same way public markets do uh, which is sometimes unfortunate because private market mein wahi and now we are seeing yes. even yes. much yes. worse yes. forms of corporate governance uh, blatant pf ne diya apne pocket mein rakh liya gst ki kisi company ko you know they have given some uh, hire kar rahe ho yeah. to uh, directly hire kar rahe ho lekin apni uh, 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 your your wife runs uh, this thing company yeah. uh, recruiting company or wife's brother runs a recruiting company and you redirect revenues this kind of stuff is it's just ugly it, yeah. when it happens in public companies we view it distastefully it, not that it hasn't happened we have seen hr scams in the biggest of it companies satyam satyam was a, not an it was was a straight forward fraud matlab mm-hmm. unne churaya matlab he falsified yeah but there are lots of small small things purchasing managers will go and uh, be, you know f- uh, ask for a bribe to get equipment uh, the question then is the question isn't that ye hota hai har jagah hota hai but what happens when the management finds out do they fire the people involved do they keep so a lot of the good it companies will have no room which means the minute you find out you're fired intel was very one famous intel is insane about this stuff so they conduct investigations on their own employees okay uh, when they disc- when they find that kuch ho raha hai somebody was in the us i think they they found that this guy was uh, stealing gold Deeper, okay. before we dive deep into this right i want to ask about financial influencer see you are a sebi registered pms yes uh, i am a sec registered in the us Correct. venture capital fund now there are these financial influencers who used to sell protein shakes on youtube right and how financial be- influencer yeah they they call themselves finance influencers they influencers selling protein shakes they were selling protein shakes okay. to to okay. two to three years ago like how do you build muscle mass of 9% 10% kind of stuff right and now they are selling by the stock by that stock by vault so this is very strange thing that is happening in india and one person commented on twitter that financial influence finance influencers will make their followers bankrupt it's entirely possible people who have suggested uh, by vault for instance and vault has gone bankrupt effectively you made your customers go bankrupt if they have invested all their money in one thing it is a problem in the sense that we have a freedom of opinion a freedom of this thing so nobody can say ki agar main bolta hu ki i use ponds and my skin got better you should also use ponds that seems to be fair because you have the knowledge and the ability to understand to say he used ponds his whatever but if i use it it may not be and yeah. i will test the blindly deepak shana ko follow nahi mm-hmm. karunga but for some reason this twist into the financial world where trust is almost given so and the oh, downside is so much right ponds ki cream nahi chala to koi baat nahi correct nahin. your downside here worst is worst case is skin allergy which i'll show to a dermatologist finance influencers correct Finan- nahi but finance influencers also my my funda is two things i mean of course i agree that people should be careful when giving such advice and you should uh, uh, you should call out people when they're giving bad advice. i think that's perfectly fair uh, anyone who says today that ye share kharido you will become rich that should be banned I mean, or not banned but or rather this should be investigative action ki kya kar rahe ho hmm. are you just saying this because you want to dump the stock on somebody else but i think that the action post should determine whether you are being malicious or not which means agar maine aapko bol diya stock kharido aapne kharida stock upar bhi gaya 
लेकिन मैंने नहीं बेचा आई हैव नॉट प्रॉफिटेड फ्रॉम इट मीनिंगफुली और वॉट एवर देन वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम सो देर इज द प्रॉब्लम मिस्टर बीस्ट राइट ही इज द लार्जेस्ट इन्फ्लुएंसर ऑन यूट्यूब विद हंड्रेड मिलियन फॉलोअर्स यस टुमारो ही सेज दिस इज एक्स वाई जी कंपनी और एक्स वाई जी टोकन ऑफ क्रिप्टो आई एम इन्वेस्टिंग इन इट हंड्रेड थाउजेंड पीपल विल ब्लाइंड प्रॉब्लम वाई इज इट मिस्टर बीस प्रॉब्लम वाई शुड ही बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर से टेलिंग एवरीबडी वॉट दे शुड बी इन्वेस्टिंग इन वर्सेज टेलिंग दैट लुक आई इन्वेस्ट इन इट यू आर वॉचिंग माई वीडियो मैं तुमको फोर्स थोड़ी कर रहा हूँ राइट एंड आई मीन एट वॉट पॉइंट डू वी से यार ओके सो इफ सो फॉर इंस्टेंस इफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ द कंट्री से I am buying Indian goods. I am not buying foreign goods. इसका मतलब ये है कि now all foreign companies should complain. My point is, is Mr. Beast, you know, when delivering a financial advice, right, in in a sector, for example, what is he qualified or is he licensed to do that? Does he yeah. need to be yeah. on a uh, on the kind of thing that says I am telling my world I have bought X? Yeah. You may consider it advice. I don't care. my point of view here is i i, I don't condone this i mean you can if his plan was to mislead investors yeah. i agree if his plan is to say mai bolunga aur jab ye log khareedenge mai bechunga and then i that way i have man, managed to manufacture an exit for myself i am okay yeah. that so the action that succeeds the statement Wonderful. determines whether you are a guilty party or not but the statement on its own just because mr b said yeah. it you bought it इसका क्या मतलब हुआ नो अदरवाइज यू शुड से दैट नो सेलिब्रिटी शुड एवर बी आस्ट अलाउड टू टॉक अबाउट एनी स्टॉक सो इफ आई गो एंड आस्क एन अमिताभ बच्चन सर आपने कभी भी रिलायंस स्टॉक खरीदा है हाँ खरीदा है वो इमीडिएट का बोलो क्या तुम सो यू कॉन्ट यू कॉन्ट से दैट आई थिंक द एक्शन नीड्स टू बी जस्टिफाइबल जस्टिफाइबली मैलिशियस or probably malicious to the extent that uh, uh, it causes a consternation yeah. in the market the view of a regulator to say ki everything you say is illegal that i think is just i think no, no, just that's why regulators are clamping down on all these the regulator cannot even in the us clamp down on this statement because the sec rules will they may be hard or tough but i don't think they can go beyond freedom of opinion for instance there was a i i know you about 2 years ago maybe roughly a little bit after when, or before when we discussed the last time there was this massive scene around this gamestop yeah gamestop was a bunch of people on a reddit thread uh buying up that stock buying up buying it up like crazy and telling each other ki aur kharido ye short wale the the people who have gone short will die and yet people who are in this reddit group were called to congress to give testimony and the guy who gave it, gave testimony actually said see, no i have i never told people and he didn't of course he he was always raving about the fundamentals of the government sure. but he would always put ki acha i have put 100000 dollars now it's become 400000 now it's become 300000 now i sold 50000 dollars he would put every of his statements but right. he would back it up with i like this company this is what's happening so when they went when he went on stage they they asked him they grilled him and there it's not the sec it's it was the par the the congress members of congress yeah. that were asking questions one of the questions was did you actively people tell people that short people will die therefore he said no i never said that i don't care about the short the people who did uh, make those statements none of them got arrested maybe some may have this thing but the point is this is free speech right you can't yeah. go beyond that free speech uh, uh, thing if your speech is followed by an, a form of malicious action then that malicious malicious action can be uh, questioned question but i think just the speech part just Can't to be. be able to say ki mr b said this but i think it's a problem when we create a trust deficit, deficit. so one of the things that i do have a problem with is uh, bankers selling bad financial products to old people tum jitna bhi financial influencer you look <laughs> this ulips and all that shit, the the stuff that is toxic and sold to my old people that should require a jail term yeah because now you are acting maliciously tum apne commission ke liye kisi aur ka matlab retirement barbaad kar rahe ho and that is a bad thing but that is because the action is malicious yeah if my a banker tells my mother you should buy this product 
whether you buy it here or you buy it somewhere else it doesn't matter mm-hmm. but you should buy this product i don't consider that a malicious action if she is she is saying ki acha you oh you you i can go to any other online yeah. site and buy it ha theek hai you buy mm-hmm. because i'm telling you that it's worth buying for you yeah. then i don't think that is malicious even if uh, you know even if my mom is old sure. or whatever because she can make that decision she'll call me she'll this thing and all that stuff it's when they abuse the trust to say from me only you buy right now you buy don't talk to anybody so my mom usually calls me and then i give one hearing to the bank yeah. then they never talk to uh, my mom also again coming to this incident right you mentioned in a tweet sometime back that your mom had few rent like real estate investments and in one of those properties the the tenant refused to pay after first month and then you, it took you 2 to 3 years to evict that tenant and it's been a crazy ride right investing in real estate and you have stopped investing in real estate altogether yes I, i'll buy a house for my own living but that's like buying a car it has nothing to do with investment but you ask me to invest in real estate i won't do it. so me ko nahi karna i i won't buy a house to rent it out and all that stuff that stuff is just i mean we went through this whole thing where can you tell us more about it the i mean the person who rented it uh, was not i mean he was he was a relatively old person yeah and uh, relatively old means he was maybe about 55 or 56 yeah and after the first month he refused to pay rent i called him up i said I, you're not paying any rent he said don't talk to me talk to my lawyer so then we said then i had to call a lawyer and we friend so it took us a long time because everybody who's in this gets uh, there's a there's a sequence of events that happens you have to file a case it has to be accepted first of all once it is accepted there are lots of things about acceptance also ki acha is this agreement even valid is this was there ever a rental agreement now luckily for us there was one rent that was paid if that person has not even paid a single rent it would be difficult for us to establish that there was a rental agreement yeah. between the two so there was a there was a rent that was paid and then a bunch of things then you go through a hearing and then you go through cross questioning and a bunch of things each of these things requires physical visits if one party doesn't show up there's an adjournment that guy showed up for any so of these so they showed up for the first hearing and maybe one more hearing in the middle but never after that their lawyer used to come and say my party is not here uh, we're filing for adjournments so they you can get up to three adjournments each time so every time the adjournment happens then the next sequence of things happens which also gets three adjournments so by the end of it it's like it was two years and uh, uh, luckily for my mother and we are lucky because it was two years but luckily for my mother she would go and visit on every single hearing typically people don't go what a torment yeah it was it was a pain but she was very she was like uh, and she she was like i am not going to give this up just yeah. because so when she finally um, the time came for the order the judge actually said listen this is my last order because i am retiring or not retiring i am being transferred he said but i will give this order before i leave i think you have been oppressed and therefore my order will come the she gave the order but after the order then another judge has to sign a different something so we were afraid that that judge will say nahi nahi ye to order to theek hai i want to hear the whole case again luckily that also didn't happen we got a uh, whatever that was thing and then we went and we by the time we had reached the house uh, this person had scooted the day before he, he obviously this is a known offense there were three other people he had done it to and uh, uh, each of those cases similar things had happened then uh, we tracked him down we spent a year trying to figure out where he is because he owed us rent um the deposit was not enough to cover obviously so we had a court order we had a uh, this thing uh, uh, what do you call that thing and you so you, you don't get to get arrested for something like this it's apparently something else where you can call the person to the police station but you have to take the cops there and uh, the police are like if you've seen all this before you'll never catch the guy yeah matlab kuch bhi kar lo then when we found that he's living here they were also surprised they said really he's not fled the car this thing so we went there we saw the cops give a you know a written letter notice and then so it was messy it's just that you're dealing with uh, stuff you don't want to deal with 
स्टॉक में क्या होगा डिविडेंड नहीं आएगा लेटर ई मेल भेज दोगे डिविडेंड आ जाएगा पर वो ही है एट बेस्ट मे बी देल सेंड सेंड फोटो ऑफ पैन कार्ड ओके ठीक है बट हियर यू आर डीलिंग विथ लाइक गोइंग टू अ कोर्ट सिटिंग इन अ बेंच विच इज यू नो द क्रिमिनल केस इज हैपनिंग नेक्स्ट टू यू दिस दैट ऑल दैट इट्स नॉट दैट इट्स इट्स नॉट वेरी प्लेजेंट एंड आई मीन इट्स लाइक इन अ वे यू नो समाइम्स इफ यूर इफ दैट इज योर बिजनेस दैट्स वॉट यूर टू डू बिजनेस हैज गुड एंड नॉट सो गुड एलिमेंट्स विद इट राइट बट रियल एस्टेट इज नॉट आर बिजनेस किसी को करना है करो पेशा कुछ भी करो यू कैन डू एनी थिंग एंड मेक मनी इन द कंट्री बट इज नॉट फॉर अस आई विल नॉट गो इन टू रियल एस्टेट फॉर मेकिंग मनी आई विल गो टू रियल एस्टेट फॉर लिविंग घर खरीदो यार अच्छा है फाइन नाइस वॉल्स बट इट्स योर ओन हाउस यू कैन डू वॉट यू वॉन्ट इफ यूर इन अ रेंटेड हाउस इट्स मोर डिफिकल्ट टू डू थिंग्स विथ एज मच फीलिंग ऑफ इम्प्यूनिटी ये दीवार मतलब तोड़नी है अब रेंटेड घर में नहीं तोड़ सकते हो अपने घर में तोड़ सकते हो मोस्टली तोड़ सकते हो बट कभी कभी ऐसा भी होता है कि नहीं तोड़ सकते हो बट ठीक है बट फॉर द मोस्ट पार्ट यू गेट लिटिल मोर फ्रीडम एंड दैट फ्रीडम इज वर्थ पेइंग फॉर इट्स लाइक हैविंग योर ओन कार वर्स एन ऊबर रात को मुझे बारह बजे आइसक्रीम खाने आना है और नहीं है ऊबर फिर Uh, or you know, I just want to go on a drive. Just I love driving, so I will always buy and own a car. The same way I'll always own. A, yeah. I'll always have one house to live in. But having multiple houses, I mean, people do it. They have fun, but not me. Where is India market as compared to global stock markets? If you have to say, so we are the largest single stock futures market in the world. We're probably the second or third largest options market in the index options market in the world in terms of number of contracts, not in terms of market size. Yeah, the volume, but. the whole of india stocks trade roughly uh, 80000 crores 70000 crores less than about 10 billion dollars a day 10 billion dollars is what microsoft trades in 3 hours so in that context we are really small and a many of our companies are really small to yeah. give an example uh, largest company is reliance reliance is about 250 billion dollars yeah. 250 billion dollars is smaller than just add amazon and apple Yeah, the market caps are greater than all of Indian listed companies combined. We are small when it comes to that <laughs> perspective, but uh, we're not very small in terms of like okay, we could compare us to say, I guess some of the smaller stock exchanges in Belgian stock exchange or something. We may be. I've never heard of Belgian stock. I don't know. I mean, so no, none of the big ones. So we are smaller than the DAX, the FTSE, the the French stock exchange. The it's called the CAC, I think. Is smaller than well, Singapore is a very complicated thing, so we'll not so discuss it. No, people don't go to Singapore, but the popular stock exchanges are in the world are like New York Stock Exchange, after that London Stock Exchange, after that Hong Kong. So New York Stock Exchange, there's the Nasdaq and there's the Chicago Chicago yeah. Board of Options, yeah. uh, 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 CBOE. Yeah. So these are one three of the most popular ones. Then there's the uh, UK one where the FTSE yeah. trades. Uh, there's the DAX in Germany. uh there is uh nikkei in japan yeah um there is there are the smaller ones like there is a um, uh kospi in korea there is a uh, uh sgx in but is, is there a possibility that global companies would one day list in india because of the worth like indian entrepreneur aspire to list in the us like on nasdaq make my trip listed on the nasdaq and it was such a proud moment fresh works listed on nasdaq but would you see at some point in time कस्टमर्स वो देर And yeah. the customers were the ones that mattered, yeah. right? In India, who can? Who can tell? Fresh works, what? Uh, if Flipkart chooses to list, will it list in India? I think it's US? very rare because it's forty billion dollar. Indian yeah. Titan is worth seventy billion. HUL is worth seventy billion. How can a Flipkart worth forty billion list in India? Let's put it this way: the forty billion is a figment of someone's imagination. No, not because it's getting reinforced again and again, right? From after Walmart bought so it, right? Walmart bought more of it at forty billion. So Walmart values it at forty. Yeah, billion. Walmart value. But that doesn't mean Indian market values. Yeah, so, so वो एक बंदे का valuation है यार वो मतलब it's like 
you know, a lot of startups have this problem because one guy comes and buys 10% of this company. But it's, it's not a VC, right? You have to remember Walmart, no, Walmart is, is a, one of the largest public companies in the US. That's okay, but and, that and still they, doesn't mean the Indian they, market will They run. can't play with their money just to mark up their investment. Uh, that's a good point. But it doesn't mean still that the company is valued at that much because they valued it. And Flipkart is still, PhonePay became an Indian holding company. Yeah. Flipkart is still a Singapore uh, HQ company. I see. So I, I don't see. see a possibility. Flipkart listing at least in India. Ha, no, so the, the problem with Flipkart listing, in, not listing in India is nobody knows Flipkart outside India. Yeah, that's the challenge. The, the If Flipkart goes and lists in the US, you'll find some people who know. But your effectively your suppliers, your customers, your everybody's partners, in. everybody's in India. So the chances of you, I, I feel that's one, that's one thing that happens. But I think also that foreign companies listing in India, they already do, by the way. Honeywell, US has a Honeywell India subsidiary. No, but they do an India subsidiary listing, right? Right. Like Unilever, HUL. But uh, I'm saying like the, like the Alibaba from China did, did the listing. In the US. In the US. Oh, that, that's, that's, that's different. I think that's also because the US market offers liquidity. Yeah. India does not offer liquidity. India does not offer. See, the problem with this is if you list in the US, you can get dollars and you bring them to India. If they list in India, they can raise rupees and they can't take the rupees yeah, out. They can't what take the rupees out. What's the benefit? If we do it internationally, then who will yeah. list it? So unless you have an Indian arm that needs to be listed, I don't think we're getting listed. Got so it. that is my view. My view. Yeah. So there was a company, Standard Chartered, had Indian depository receipts okay. against its UK shares. But over time, they kind of removed it off. Where I'm heading is... Uh, can Indian liquidity market in the public stock market can be rich enough for it? Everybody, like example startups, right, are incentivized to list earlier in their journey. They can list even now. There are five crore com- companies with five crore revenue that are listing. That is, that's on the SME exchange. Huh. <laughs> okay, because I'll give you an example. There's a company called E2E, yeah. E2E Networks. It's a startup. It listed on the SME exchange. Now it's a 400 crore company on the main board. They upgraded they, to they the upgraded main board. The, but when they listed on e, the, the SME exchange, uh, what was the revenue and valuation? Do you remember? In it your... was uh, 80 rupees per share. So I think it was less than, uh, it was 100 crores. or little bit 100 crore revenue crores. company? No, no, 100 crores was the market cap. Okay, now they are a 400 crore now market. Now they are a 400 crore market cap company. So they have moved up. Actually, I don't know how much market cap there was. There were maybe 60 crores in the list. I'm not sure. It was very small. Bloom funded. Yeah. So, uh, uh, in fact, Tarun is a, is a friend. So, you know, in that sense, uh, I'm biased, but... I think very interesting company that serves the Indian market and tries to uh, give Amazon competition uh, effectively. But not just that, it's a bunch of other things as well. But there is uh, the interesting part about this is they chose to list on the SME exchange. Anybody can. The problem really is valuations. At some point, you're not going to get the valuation that the private market is giving you in the public markets. And unless at some point that bridges together, and I'll tell you, it's happening in the US right now almost like a slap in the face. The public markets have valued a lot of startups at one-tenth what their private valuations were. Baiju's today in India has already seen its own valuation slashed maybe 50, 70, 80% by US companies who hold it, who need to value it, who've decided, yeah, when this IPO will not be so much. So given that, you are going to have a problem because now you go to a situation where, let's you have your Dunzo. Dunzo needs to raise more capital. The problem is it has ratchet clauses in the cap table. Yeah. If it raises more capital at a lower valuation, the ratchet clauses kick in and then the founders are left with nothing. Yeah. Who's going to run that company if the founders are going to left, be left with nothing? We have seen this happen in... Farm Easy recently, right? The, the valuation went from 5 billion to 500 mil. Yes. And uh, they had to do a second issue at 500 mil and now I don't know what the ratchet yeah, clauses are. The founders are, are getting MSOPs because the... the because the valuations have fallen, which is like, I don't understand it. Because why do you have a ratchet clause yeah. if you want to compensate the founder anyway? Pehle tum usko dilute kara rahe the ki main hi hunga to tum ho jaoge. Ab wo keh raha hai ki main ho jaunga to main kyun? Ye bade khaa, thik thik aapko swap de dete hain. Apna ratchet clause hara do na, bas simple. Everybody remove your ratchets and you're fine. But that doesn't happen. And because of that. And I'll tell you one thing. If you value a company with a ratchet and you invest, invest say, $10 million in a company 
and you take a ratchet clause and you take a board seat and you say i have uh, preferential access to the next round or jobi or up to my yeah. whatever uh, these are all rights you get right as an investor is ye rights ki koi value hoti hai so agar aap 10 million invest kar rahe ho you are getting let us say 10% of the company yeah. roughly 2% out of the 10% is for these rights also yeah. ki you will not get it if you have yes. common preference equity right so if you give me those shares as as common preference equity i will say nahi nahi ye वैल्यूएशन इसका हंड्रेड मिलियन नहीं है इसका एट्टी मिलियन है वो बीस मिलियन आपने वो जो एक्स्ट्रा लगाए हैं वो राइट्स मेरे को तो नहीं मिल रहे हैं एज एज अ पब्लिक इन्वेस्टर व्हाई एम आई गोइंग टू पे फॉर इट सो पब्लिक मार्केट वैल्यूएशन विल ऑलवेज बी लोअर जस्ट टू कॉम्पनसेट फॉर दैट इफेक्ट अनलेस योर कंपनी इज सो गुड दट दे आर सिंग की यू नो आई लव इट इट विल जस्ट कीप गोइंग अप गूगल आर ट्रबल वेन इट लिस्टेड बिकॉज गूगल ऑल दो आई डोट नॉट इट वॉज प्रॉफिटेबल was profitable when it was listed. listed okay so when it listed i think it was 80 dollars a share they wanted to do a reverse auction reverse ratch auction and people didn't like it and all that so the sh- they barely managed to slip through in the ipo uh but now of course it is history it's fantastic and all that so amazon went down 90% in year 2 but luckily he didn't have to raise much capital or any yeah. capital for that matter so he wasn't too worried you have companies today who basically have another 6 months to 10 months of runway in cash in uh, private or public market private yeah well uh, public to fir bhi theek hai in private markets you have let's say 10 months of runway at the end of that runway or when you come close to the end of that runway let's say you choose ki acha chhodo or forget the runway now let's go raise from the public markets now public markets people keep thinking ki public market mein list hoga to hum apne share bech sakte hain Nobody says कि public market में listing है तो ये company बड़ी हो जाएगी Look at all the VCs. The first thing they want to do is sell. Yeah. Every of these new age companies that have come, the first after six months of lock in, कुछ भी करो सर वो एक बेचने आते हैं. तो सब बेचने आते हैं. Imagine right if if a tiger hadn't <coughs> sold its share in carrot line. We discussed carrot line earlier. They sold sixty two percent. If they would have even kept the ten percent. Ten percent. where it 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 value increased by 30x in 7 years whatsapp yeah uh, whatsapp sold to facebook everybody all the investors in whatsapp uh, they cashed i out. think they they cashed out it was and they were given like shares yeah. uh, they were given shares of facebook they sold the shares yeah. the shares were given at i think uh, 57 or 37 dollars per share of today facebook it's 400 today is 400 so you know you lost <laughs> a 10x value just by not Yeah. yeah so i think that is a i'm uh, uh, one vc actually told me this yaar we are vcs we are not supposed to invest in public markets so jab exit ho jata hai hame paise wapas dene padte hain it by by definition of my existence and my contract with my customers my lps i have to return them the funds as soon as i'm able to exit so if i'm able to exit and i've got my return i don't care what that return is i have to give it now you seen it and we hosted sanjeev pichandani on the podcast just like his podcast got published on neon show four weeks back uh that was the first show after rebranding from 100x entrepreneur neon show he told one thing right and he anecdotes again rakesh junjunwala that he once went to meet rakesh junjunwala and rakesh junjunwala said to him sanjeev if you own a very good company never sell it and he follows that today he hasn't sold a single share of zomato he hasn't sold a single share of policy bazaar He said, "I'll keep on holding them. Nobody can stop me." This, see, this is the power of permanent capital. Ab, ab, if your capital is, then you can keep it for a long time. You can keep it for a long time. And permanent capital is what Warren Buffett has. Yeah. You can't tell Warren Buffett, "I have so many shares. Give me the share of Coke's share. Give me the share of Coke's share." He will say, "Dude, you have my shares. Go sell it in the market. I don't care. Yeah. I am keeping my Coke shares. I am not going to sell yeah. them." Sanjeev Bichchandani can tell. मेरे को कौन फोर्स करने वाला है जोमैटो के शेयर को भी नो बडी कैन फोर्स मी नाउ लुक एट आज वी आर अ पी एम एस इफ माई कस्टमर सेज गिव मी माई मनी बैक वॉट एवर शेयर ही ओन ही कैन इंस्ट्रक्ट मी टू सेल दम सो आई हैव टू सेल इफ ही इंस्ट्रक्ट मी टू सेल सो आई एम आई डो नॉट हैव पर्मनेंट कैपिटल आई हैव टेम्पररी कैपिटल वी सीज हैव टेम्पररी कैपिटल यू टेक कैपिटल फ्रॉम योर कस्टमर फ्रॉम योर एल पीज एंड दे गिव यू द एबिलिटी टू Uh, this thing so if you have said ki are you know what this company is listed but i needed to i need you to stay invested for five more years one vc can one of your lps can say i'm not going to wait five years me ko abhi do aise wapas why are you invested in some public mm-hmm. company now so given that that 
पावर ऑफ दोज दिस थिंग प्लस सी राजीव सॉरी राकेश जुनियन वाला हैड अ वेरी क्लियर फिलोसफी इन माइंड ही सेट आई विल नॉट एक्सेप्ट एक्सटर्नल कैपिटल मैं किसी और का पैसा नहीं करूँगा हिस्ट ऑलवेज सेम आई मैनेज माई वाइफ कैपिटल माई वाइफ इज माई ओनली कस्टमर दैट इज परमानेंट कैपिटल बिकॉज दैट इज एक्चुअली टेलिंग यू दैट राकेश कुड ओन शेयर्स कुड सेल शेयर्स यू टू टेल दिस ऑल द टाइम आपको क्या पढ़िए मैं क्या खरीद रहा हूँ मैं क्या बेच रहा हूँ वाई आर यू बॉदर्ड अबाउट दैट आई विल डू वॉट आई हैव टू डू बिकॉज इट्स माई मनी वाई शुड आई टेल यू वॉट आई एम डूइंग ऑल्सो बिकॉज पीपल से सर आप इसको और खरीद रहे हो मैं जो भी कर रहा हूँ उससे आपको क्या विच इज रीजन माइकल बारी बिग शॉट सेटर्स मनी literally with a with a letter that said none of you guys deserve this money but i'm giving it to you because you you have it because they tried to pull it out from him a few months before the actual short worked out and they made 10x on their money yeah so he was so disillusioned with that that he said i'm not going to manage anybody else's money it's just going to be mine so in a way his mental tension that he had to undergo at that time probably forced him to say something like this I think very interesting, and plus, see, Sanjeev Bichandani also has uh, has now what is called effectively permanent capital. Yeah, because he has the ability to say, "I will raise money as nokri, and give you shares of nokri. I will take that money and do something with it. If you don't like what I do with it, you can sell your nokri shares in the market. Yeah, I don't have to give you back your money. Beautiful, isn't it? I mean, I think that's the perfect form of per- permanent capital, which allows him to be a lot more patient as an investor. and a lot more um, targeted so for instance if he sees say that zomato has not realized the value that it should be at he can stay forever yeah and uh, i don't so you see the cap tables what happens uh, ant financial sold a bunch of some stock yeah uh, why because they're like you know what we we are a financial company we invested financially ab kya fayda ha or uh, of zomato you are talking of about? i think they sold it of ptm i'm not sure of zomato also zomato also bunch of other people sold so P- ptm sold. was a exchange ptm all, all of this on the exchange no, all, like ptm was exchange like vijay build a holding company in some netherlands or something that was not that was that was a different one before that okay. they had already sold a bunch so, of uh, shares uh, on the exchange and i think a lot, lot of the others also alibaba i'm sorry not alibaba soft bank and a bunch of other pre- companies they all had Uh, contractual sold. obligations one of them are contractual another one is though ant is not really contractual india has a uh, problem right now yeah. with chinese uh, founders or chinese yeah. owners of of companies and therefore it's it's not new to india china also has a problem with indian owners of companies yeah. so i won't say that you know there's anything wrong with it because uh, there was yeah. a company called apollo tires it is a company called apollo tires apollo tires wanted to buy a company called cooper tires in 2015 Cooper Tires biggest plant was in China. They said, "Aap Indian ko leke aaoge." Of course, not in Hindi, but if you bring an Indian, I will not let you enter my factory. They refused to enter, allow Cooper Tire themselves to enter their own factory. Okay. Saying that you cannot, you cannot sell to an Indian guy. Now, if you have such rules, we also have no. Yeah. Uh, wo hai, so what's the big deal in that? But I feel here that uh, uh, that is more a driving force, the political arguments of of some of these things to sell. But it doesn't matter. The point is, this is for selling. Right now, there's a company called Geo Financials that listed a few yesterday morning. Geo Financials is a demerger from Reliance Industries. Yeah. Reliance Industries is ten percent of India's index. Yeah. Um, index funds that hold Reliance Industries got free shares of Geo Financials. Yeah. Geo financials will not be in the index, so all these index funds have to sell. The index funds own two lakh crores worth of AUM. Usme se ten percent reliance cap, which is twenty thousand crores. Usme se ten percent reliance, so it's about two thousand to three thousand crores of worth of just geo financials that is out there. What do these index funds do? They can love geo financials all they want. They can they can say ki boss, ye sabse bada company ho sakta hai. Par mere ko index follow karna hai. इंडेक्स में जियो फाइनेंशियल नहीं है मेरे पास है बेचना है देर इज नो वे टू से 
आई कैन आई कीप दिस शेयर मैं किसी को नहीं बताऊँगा hmm. ये वाला फंडा होता ही hmm. नहीं है सो वंस यू आर ट्रांसपेरेंट एंड यू हैव दैट लेवल ऑफ डिस्क्लोजर योर ओनली चॉइस इज टू सेल सो गेस वॉट हैपन्स थ्री डेज और टू डेज कंजेक्यूटिवली द स्टॉक्स इट अ लोअर सर्किट अब कुछ भी कर लो गिवन दैट आई थिंक यू नो परमानेंट कैपिटल इज प्रॉब्ली अ नाइस थिंग टू हैव एंड एंड यू थिंक द लिक्विडिटी फॉर इंडियन स्टार्टअप बी बोथ एन एस एम लाइक इन इंडिया टिल नाउ इन द लास्ट सेवन एट मंथ सेवेंटी टू कंपनीज हैव लिस्टेड ऑन एस एम ई एक्सचेंज विच इज़ द हाइस्ट इंडिया हैज़ एवर सीन राइट एंड सो स्टार्टअप आर गोइंग टूवर्ड्स मोर एस एम ई एक्सचेंज एंड वुड यू योर सेल्फ एज पार्ट ऑफ योर पी एम एस डिपेंड टू द एस एम ई एक्सचेंज नो बिकॉज एस एम ई डजन हैव लिक्विडिटी इट डजन मेक सेंस फॉर कंपनी लाइक आर्स वेर वी ऑफर लिक्विडिटी टू आर कस्टमर्स कि आप एक दिन में बेच सकते हो I can't offer them and then have companies which I can't sell in a day. Yeah. But I think it makes sense for a lot of closed-ended funds. Uh, a lot of, in fact, VC funds themselves. You could actually finance companies on an SME exchange. You could the minimum uh, per share is one lakh rupees. I think that means you can buy in multiples of one lakh rupees. So which is easily possible yeah. for a VC fund. So you could actually finance companies on an SME exchange until they become big enough. Uh, may not work out for us particularly, but I know PMSs. There are some PMSs who have restrictive conditions. Who say, "Ap four years till passing in can sakte," and uh, there's an exit load of X percent. So they use that to buy these SME stocks. So SME exchange is not immediately liquidable. Let's say I buy a share on this. As in, they're not that many players. They're not that much liquidity over there compared to the main board. So if I have twenty crores worth of shares, it may take me three four days to exit. Yeah. Uh, and that too, I hope. Somebody uh, will buy it. Somebody will buy it. So <laughs> and SME, nothing, nothing will happen to the share share price. Oh, share price will fall. Okay. I mean, we we have seen share price fall for like eighty lakh rupees also. So you know that is guaranteed. But the problem is eighty lakh rupees. Chala to jayega at least three percent. Niche gir ke, fir chala hmm. chala hi jayega. Here it will fall forty percent also. You won't get the shares out. So that that happens sometimes when there's no liquidity in a share. Share prices fall fifty, sixty, seventy percent. It's not a very attractive proposition for startups to list on SME exchange. If the price is so volatile and there are not enough buyers. Uh, okay, the private markets are exactly the same. Oh. There is no liquidity. Yeah. And there is uh, there is no volatility, of course. But there's no liquidity at all. But my fund has what difference? Why, why would I put an effort to list on the SME exchange even? Right. I might keep the company private and potentially list. at the main exchange make it like but if you need capital what are you going to do so at some point you're going to need capital yeah and if your if the vcs don't participate then maybe you can go to the sme exchange and participate because even to a vc it's an exitable option yeah you can't today a vc cannot buy 10% of a company and then sell like half a percent yeah कि यार मेरे को पैसे चाहिए थोड़ा सा बेच के वो दस का पांच कर सकता पर उससे कम नहीं कर सकता राइट मतलब देयर इज नो पार्शियल लिक्विडिटी राइट देयर इज नो देयर इज नो पार्शियल लिक्विडिटी इवेंट एंड एसएमई गिव्स यू दैट माय फंड इज इन फैक्ट वीसी शुड गो एंड टेल कंपनीज प्लीज लिस्ट ऑन द एसएमई एक्सचेंज आई विल बाय योर शेयर ऑन द एसएमई एक्सचेंज उसके बाद चाहे कोई लिक्विडिटी ना भी हो ठीक है एक दिन आ जाएगा योर ईशॉप्स योर कम योर एम्प्लॉइज कैन सेल ऑन द दिस थिंग एक्सचेंज थिंक अबाउट इट इट्स अ मच इट्स अ मच क्लीनर प्रोपोजिशन But the problem is valuations. Hmm. You can't. I mean, if you value a company at some obscene price, its chances are that company will be brought down to size. Yeah. Your next round will be list be based on your current listed price. Yeah. So if your current listed price is one hundred and fifty rupees a share, you can't raise it five thousand rupees yeah. a share. In private markets, it's still possible. It's possible. Well, thank you so much, Deepak. I think this calls for a third episode sometime in the okay, future. No problem. But loved it. अरे गुड गुड मजा आ गया इट्स गुड टू बी हियर थैंक्स सो मच दैट थैंक्स सो मच एंड ऑल द बेस्ट टू द नियॉन फंड एंड टू द नियॉन शो एज थैंक यू सो मच